Hey friends, exciting times. We are in Glasgow, which is something that uh, was really long overdue. We've been in Edinburgh for seven years now and we never really like took the time to really spend a chunk of time or like a weekend in Glasgow. So finally, I found this amazing hotel for a really good deal. This is uh, Moxie in Merchant City. There's no coffee machines in the rooms, but you can always come down and like make your own coffee and you can make like 10 of them. So I like that because I like to have 10 coffees every morning. That's the, the cat lifestyle. We decided to take you with us because obviously a lot of you have been asking about Glasgow themed content. Uh, our first stop is gonna be McCune Smith, which is a coffee shop that's conveniently close to this hotel. Uh, it is named after James McCune Smith, who was the first African American to get like a full blown medical degree and he got it here in Glasgow. So that's super interesting. This cafe is supposed to be very good, uh, vegetarian and vegan friendly, and I'm hungry, I'm gonna have everything, Simon's gonna have the other half of everything, and I can't wait. Okay, so we had an amazing breakfast at uh, McCune Smith, which by the way, I can only recommend. It was so good and so cheap as well. It was so much cheaper than the places we go to in Edinburgh. It's ridiculous, so good. But from that east end of Merchant City, it only takes about five minutes to get here into the area of uh, the Glasgow Cathedral and the necropolis. The Glasgow Cathedral that you can see behind me is a beautiful Gothic building that you can actually get into for free. They also currently have like a little photography exhibition and like aerial shots of Scotland, which I find super interesting. Uh, there's also a little gift shop which sells a lot of Outlander stuff. So if you're that sort of person, that sort of fan of pop culture, then one more reason to visit the amazing St. Mungo's or, you know, Glasgow Cathedral. This is the necropolis. I really like the name. It sounds kind of spooky, which, you know, it is. It's a cemetery. It's a Victorian cemetery and it has about 50,000 people buried here, but only about three and a half thousand actually have tombstones, which apparently is very typical for cemeteries from the Victorian era. Apart from coming here to explore the history of people who lived in Glasgow, you can also get really nice views from here. Today is actually turning out to be quite a nice day, except for this magnificent wind. Uh, but the visibility is really nice and you can see like mountains and the city and other cool parks that we're not gonna visit because they're on the other side of the city and we don't have the time. Overall, just a, a beautiful, historical, charming, calm place.
we moved our butts from Merchant City to the city center. So now we're kind of in the area where the central train station is. First, we got some extra energy from a place called Laboratorio. We grabbed some nice flat whites there and some biscotti. They were very tasty. Uh, then we walked five further minutes towards the station and now we're in a place called the Lighthouse which is a building that was designed originally by Charles Rennie McIntosh, who you will see all around Glasgow. He's a very important figure in like the art scene in Glasgow. He was a designer and an architect, and him and his firm have created... Ooh, it's raining. And Macintosh and his firm created this building for one of the Glasgow newspapers. Uh, those guys have been in here for like hundred years and uh, now it's actually like a design and architecture museum so if you're interested in Macintosh and some Scottish design you should stop by here it's all free there's a cute little shop and a lot of really great views as you can see this is the platform so this one is covered but there's also the tower which is like the, the lighthouse tower where you can actually walk around on fresh air and you're gonna have amazing views of the city so perhaps if you're at the train station you have a couple of minutes to kill you might pop in into the lighthouse you know either come here to the platform or the tower have some nice views take some nice pictures there's a lot of cool photo opportunities here as you're gonna see there's a really cool sort of stairwell here which made Simon super sick uh, <laughs> and you might also uh, want to have a look at some of the art and design here and get uh, very much culturally enlightened like we did So we just had a very late but very tasty lunch from a place called Singland, which is here in Garnet Hill in Glasgow. That's kind of in the area of uh, the Glasgow School of Art. So if you're around there, if you're a student or if you're visiting their art shop, uh, you might want to pop by here as well. They have a great selection of food. They also bake their own stuff. So a lot of their sandwiches, you can actually pick what bread you want the filling to come in or on. Uh, we had amazing falafel, we had some nice roast veggies that were so tasty. They also have a lot of cake to choose from, a lot of it is gluten-free and dairy-free, so whatever your dietary needs are, they can cater for that. Uh, and yeah, I would love to stay there for even longer, but they close at 5, so keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, I can only recommend this amazing place. They have two places here in Glasgow. I think that one of them is back in Merchant City. Now I think we're gonna go back to the city center and do some shopping slash browsing in some of the nerdy shops that we found here last time. And then possibly some dinner, but I think that we will be quite full of the tasty food from this place for quite some time. So in the end we walked back to the train station area, we kind of had a look around some of our favorite shops but we needed to grab a drink so we went to the Corinthian uh, which is a bar and I think there's also like a casino in a different room but it's all set in this like old bank building. Uh, the space is beautiful, it's very spacious, quite calm, there weren't many people. Uh, I enjoyed that, like it was a very kind of chill atmosphere for me. Not extremely expensive, but um, for myself I can only say that in Edinburgh I can definitely point you towards better drinks than this. Uh, after that we wanted to grab some Indian, but it was super busy, which is probably a good sign for that place, because you know, busy places on a Thursday night probably actually good. So instead we had to go grab some ramen. Ramen was okay, once again. I could show you better ramen places than this one. 
maybe next one if you, if you know of the best ramen place that is not ramen dayo let me know in the comments below because i would love to know what is the best ramen place in glasgow anywho now we're in george square i believe and we are kind of surrounded by many majestic looking buildings uh, this is something that Edinburgh definitely doesn't have, so it's uh, quite exotic. And like overall, the architecture in the city is just feels very different. So um, you know, if you're visiting Edinburgh and you're thinking, should I visit Glasgow? It's like if you're into architecture and stuff like that, it's going to give you quite a different experience. So from that point of view, I think that's a good idea. We're now going to go back to the hotel. It's almost 11, so I am pooped, and you can see that my makeup has just like left the building. So. I just gotta take the rest of my face off and sleep, sleep the ramen off. And tomorrow is a new day. We're gonna explore some more, and once again, we're gonna take you with us. So, hope you're looking forward. Okay, so it is our day two in Glasgow. Uh, as you can see, I am talking at you from the hotel room because um, apparently there's been a weather warning issued for wind outside. And you know, like when you live in Scotland, you get used to wind, but when you're shooting, it's not the best thing because, well, my hair goes all over my face and also the audio gets messed up. So yeah. Anyway, the plan for today, for the first part of the day at least, is to take an Uber to Tantrum Donuts, which uh, is a donut place that I've been dreaming of for the last about two years, maybe three years. It's always good to be making a video about it because then I can justify getting more than I would usually do. So that's fun. Uh, after that, we're gonna be basically next to the Kelvin Grove Park and Museum. I think that if the weather is not really permitting, we might not stop by the park, but we will definitely go to the museum because uh, I don't think that Simon has ever been and I've only been once and I remember really liking it. Like architecturally, it's this like Hogwarts sort of place and it also magically has like all like Scottish art and uh, history. I think they also have like a, like a taxidermied haggis which uh, if you're not uh, if you're not familiar with it uh, haggis is an actual animal mm -hmm. it kind of it kind of looks like something between like a guinea pig and like uh, some sort of tiny round deer we're going to take you to Kelvin Grove just to show you the haggis Okay, time for another check-in from us. We are currently in the campus area of uh, University of Glasgow. Uh, the reason why we came here is, well, first of all, the weather was absolutely dreadful. So we had to find an activity that would let us be indoors. And here you can actually find a couple of small museums. It's the Hunterian Museum and the sort of like 
uh, other small museums that all belong under the Hunterian umbrella. Uh, we visited one that was kind of uh, heavily focused on history and natural history and then we found a zoology one which was quite like retro if you're into that sort of vintage sort of off-colored 70s aesthetic that one's gonna be the one for you we also tried to find the anatomy one but we couldn't but then we realized it would probably just make us sick because we are both sissies right before we made it here we visited the paper cup coffee company which is kind of in this area uh, it is kind of a small place but really good coffee you know they do like badge brew filter and like kalita filter and any espresso drink you might think of they even have their own like coffee bean club if you're into that sort of thing and their food looks amazing we took advantage of their daily special which was okonomiyaki and if you know me i just cannot say no to an okonomiyaki which is you know my favorite japanese pancake with uh, like uh, dried fish bonito flakes on top and a whole lot of japanese mayo and this was really tasty on the side we also got some porridge because that's another thing i clearly cannot say no to plus you know it made me feel like a bit healthy and it's a Scottish food so yeah I'm doing a little tour of Scotland and just eating porridge everywhere if you ever invite me to your house just make me some porridge I'll be happy our evening plan is to go to the arches which is a little area under the central train station and they have this like Friday to Sunday food market and we're really curious about that because it's that sort of similar thing as we have in Edinburgh you know where you have multiple street food vendors doing their thing and maybe some live music that sort of thing uh, yeah so we really want to see what that's about if it's as good as the ones we have back home Thank you Glasgow, you have been really good to us and we really enjoyed our time in you. Right now we are back in Edinburgh as you can probably see by being in Waverley Station. Uh, yeah, like I am, I am just so genuinely surprised by how much I enjoyed my time in Glasgow and I will definitely be back. You can tell me in the comments below if you've been to Glasgow before and what places would you want us to visit next time or if you've never been, tell us if this video made you super want to go. Okay guys, uh, I'm excited to bring you on our future adventures and I'll see you soon.